Um, I was very sad all the time, I was withdrawn, had no friends at school, things like that. Um, I wanted to sleep all the time, but it wasn't picked up because mental health wasn't really discussed much back in the 1970s. It just wasn't recognised. I was 16 when I was put on antidepressants for the first time and that helped for a few months and I came off them and I got unwell again after that. I think my grand's death triggered the um, self-harming because grand was everything to me. She was my second mum, um, my safe haven from things going wrong at home and at school and things. And I'd always turn to my gran, but also I was very confused about my sexual identity because I realised now oh, I'm bisexual, but back in the late 70s, early 80s, that wasn't discussed very much, you know, and I just felt like I was the only one in the world who felt that way. And I felt really, I don't know, dirty or not good enough or kind of weird almost, you know. I felt like a freak, like I was the only person in the whole world who could possibly feel that way and that I was somehow just not good enough to be around, you know. I first got married at age 18. I was just 18 and we got married. And um, we, I stayed married to my first husband for nine years. Um, just after we got married, I got very depressed and um, found things difficult to cope with. At one time I was self-injuring twice a week, up at A and E requiring stitching, and things got quite bad. I was abusing alcohol and medication. I was going out and getting drunk, and basically if I could find a nice man, I'd sleep with him, just out of sheer desperation to feel somebody close to me for an hour. It was just a terrible time. Um, we had some highs, we had some fun parties at home and that. And uh, we had a nice holiday together to Austria. But um, a lot of it was, it was very high and very low at that time, you know. I got diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And um, that's helped me understand myself a lot more. Understand that I get mood swings, that I find change very, very difficult, that I'm an insecure person, and that um, I tend to look on people either as like a godlike figure or like as um, somebody out to hurt me in some way. A very low point in my life, obviously. Um, it was the lowest point I think I've ever felt. I had an argument with my doctor on the morning of the day and then in the afternoon, it was a hot summer's day and I decided that I wanted to take my own life. I couldn't take it anymore. So I did and I locked the door, double locked the front door so nobody could get in even with a key. I closed the bathroom window and the bedroom window and locked them. And my husband broke in. We were three floors up in a little flat. He climbed over the wind, over the roof and broke in through the lounge window to get hold of me because I was in a bad way on the floor in the bathroom. Things got a bit better for a while. Then they got bad again over the Christmas holidays. I was ill again, I was taken in again. Then I was discharged again, beginning of the year. And I got a job in a catering firm but um, I took the job out of desperation because it was just a, a rotten job, really. And um, the, the manager there was sexually abusing me. I didn't feel I could tell anybody at that time. It became my way of letting out the pain in a way. But also I felt very angry towards my boss because he was doing this to me. He kept saying he was my friend. At that time, I felt he was my only friend in the world because me and my husband weren't getting on very well either. So this man, my only friend in the whole world, was abusing me. 
I was angry about that. And I took it out on myself rather than get angry with him. I was at the day centre, the Cattell Day Centre. A new member of staff called Pete, it's not his real name, came to work there. And he worked there for about two to three years. And I made absolute momentous strides when he was there, really did. He challenged me about my self-injury and asked me, was it my friend? And I looked at him as if he was crazy when he said that to me because I thought, well, it's not a friend to me. You know, it's just um, an enemy to me. And then I realised that it was my friend. It was helping me cope with very difficult situations. But it was something that I found that given alternatives to self-injuring, I was able to make a healthier choice. Pete helped me find alternatives to self-injuring, different ways of expressing how I was feeling, um, different um, ways of talking to people and talking things through rather than taking it out on myself. That absolutely changed my life for the better. I've learned to um, to stop, stop what I'm doing, take a deep breath, look around at what's going on, observe what's going on, pull back from the situation, put it in some perspective, it's just a bad day, it's not your entire life and practice what works, practice, 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 so talking to people, writing things down, using art, using music, using distractions, go for a walk, call the Samaritans, call the Albeck Ward, all these things rather than self-injuring. At one time I was self-injuring twice a week, now at the most it's twice a year. I've got a key worker at the Recovery and Wellbeing Service, and the psychiatrist that I see once in a month on average. If I need to see them more often, I can do. But um, the support is an awful lot better now than it ever has been. Please talk to somebody, someone you trust, maybe ideally a doctor or a psychiatrist. If you really can't face talking to anybody else, at least talk to the Samaritans. They'll help you and guide you. Um, it's important to reach out and make contact with people. I know it's the hardest thing to do and all you want to do is have a duvet day, but it really is important. I think if I can help one person to turn away from self-injury into a better life, then I've made my life worthwhile. Self-injury became a big problem for me. And I think that's a lot of it to, was to do with the fact that I wasn't given the treatment I needed at the right time. Now the treatment is there, it is available. People do want to help people. And I genuinely feel that if I can help one person, then that's worthwhile. <laughs>